opener against Alabama right here in Atlanta, by the way. Meanwhile, Paul Johnson across the field, the reigning ACC Coach of the Year, by the way. He uh, says that this is a game that they absolutely have to win, echoing the sentiments of many of his players. And Mark, if you're going to lose, if you have to lose a game, lose a game early in college football because Virginia Tech is a perfect example. They lost the first game to Alabama, but they have climbed back to a number four national ranking. Well, Paul Johnson had some really kind of incendiary words to set this game up. Here's what he had to say. He was quoted in local newspapers as saying, we have to be accountable as coaches when it looks like they don't know what they are doing. Alluding to the very poorest defensive performance perhaps last week against Florida State where they gave up over 530 yards, but still came away with the victory. And Mark, I talked to Dave Womack, Georgia Tech's defensive coordinator before the game. And what we talked about, confidence is so important for this Georgia Tech defense because the last two weeks, they have given up over 1,000 yards. They need to get off to a good start defensively. Well, I said uh, those comments were incendiary. Yeah, they really fired up his defense. And they, the players that we spoke with anyway earlier this week, we're ready to prove that they're much better than the yardage that they've given up over the last couple of games. Georgia Tech winning the toss and deferring to the second half. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, will receive. And back deep, Dyrell Roberts and David Wilson for the Hokies. Keep in mind, special teams, one of the signatures of Frank Beamer's tenure here at Virginia Tech. There's Roberts, number 11. He already has one kickoff return for a touchdown this year. From the goal line, it's Wilson. And Wilson's going to be stopped up at the 20-yard line. That's where they'll start first down and 10. And Tyrod Taylor, the starting quarterback, 18-3 and three as a starter. Very few have had a better record at this juncture of their career at Virginia Tech. During the last couple of weeks, as you look at his season numbers, keep in mind that he has completed 75% of his passes with four touchdown tosses versus no interceptions. Check out the rest of the starters at the top of the screen. Keep an eye on number 34 right there, Ryan Williams. He is the leading rusher in the ACC coming into this game. First and 10, a little play fake. Taylor up top. A little bit of contact, but no call intended for Jarrett Boykin. Good coverage. Actually, pressure up front by Derek Morgan. Mark, this wind, it is really windy in Atlanta today. Keep in mind, Virginia Tech actually going with the, going into the wind. Excuse me right now. Pretty aggressive play call right there off the bat. Second down and 10. Oglesby and Williams in the backfield. Ryan Williams, the redshirt freshman, the highly touted redshirt freshman, gains about three on the play. Bob, let's take a look at the impact player. Well, Mark, I think Tyrod Taylor is one of the most improved quarterbacks in college football. Early in his career, he showed he had great skills. I think he's becoming a polished quarterback now. Ryan Williams. To me, this guy may be the most exciting running back in all of college football. He's only a redshirt freshman. And when you play the triple option, your defensive ends are key. Jason Worlds, another in those long line of Big time tech defensive lineman. And the lineage of Corey Moore and Daryl Tapp. Third down and seven. Georgia and Georgia Tech calls a timeout. Remember, check out the lineups. You can see the Georgia Tech defense up at the top of the screen. The guys up front, the guys to watch, Derek Morgan, the leader up there, number 91, a defense that we said has had its struggles in the last couple of games. Bob, we talked about the fact that they've made several adjustments defensively, most notably first after the Miami loss in Miami, and then another one perhaps now, and that's Coach Womack on the hot seat a little bit right well, Mark, now. Mark, any time you struggle like they've struggled on defense, the key word is always simplify. 
do less, but do it better. The problem is this is their second simplification. <laughs> they simplified after Miami. You know, the last two weeks, I mean, they've given up 75 points over 1,000 yards. Right here on third down, they are 99th in the country on third down. So this has been a big, big problem area for them, third down defense. I guess the odd thing is, despite those struggles defensively, they've won their last three games. <laughs> Third and seven coming out of the timeout. Boone in motion. Taylor up top. And it's caught at the 41 yard line by Dyrell Roberts. A great catch as he was working against Mario Butler. A 40-yard gain and a first down for the Hokies. Boy, that is just one-on-one -on -one Darrell Roberts, who had the 11-yard touchdown against Nebraska. That's excellent coverage by Mario Butler right there. Not much analyzation there, Mark. Huh. Just Darrell Roberts going up and making a play. That's a big blow to this Georgia Tech defense because they had that thing well defended. They chronicled their struggles on third down. Virginia Tech. Converting on third down, first down and ten. Lincoln was in motion. And this is the redshirt freshman again, Ryan Williams, getting about two on the play. We should let you know that Ryan Williams has had some health issues during the past several days. Actually, he didn't work out much on Thursday. He had limited work on Wednesday. So it's going to be a little bit of a, an experiment and a see as they go along as to how healthy and how much juice he has. You know, Mark, I think particularly for a redshirt freshman for a younger guy you know one of the toughest things sometimes for a young guy is to learn to pay th play through some discomfort so he's had some health issues this week it'll be interesting to see how he fights through it nowhere to go for jared boykin and it'll be third and long coming up Look at the weather conditions here in the metropolitan Atlanta area. 49 degrees, but partner, as you said a minute ago, man, you and I were down in the field there, and I think I saw Dorothy and Toto blowing by in the wind. Well, I had a hard time getting you out of the box to come down and join me, but it is extremely windy, 15 miles per hour, kind of swirling around Virginia Tech going into the wind right now. And the officials are going to blow this play dead. Prior to the snap, play a game, offense number five, five yards, still third down. Mark, one problem Virginia Tech has had on offense, even though they've improved dramatically, pass protection. You know, they're 104th in the NCAA in pass protection. They give up almost three sacks a game. And that's really strange when you think about the mobility of Tyrod Taylor. So pass protection has been a key problem for Virginia Tech. Third and 12 after the penalty. Oglesby in the backfield beside Taylor. They converted last time on third down. And Taylor is sacked back to the 45. And that effectively takes them out of field goal range as well. Sylvester, one of the first guys to get there along with Jason Peters. The 11th sack of the season for the Yellow Jackets. Watch right here. They're going to bring both linebackers. The number 51, Brad Jefferson, is going to come around on this twist stunt. We just talked about pass protection, Mark. A key stop, though, for this Georgia Tech defense. That's a huge boost in confidence. Brett Bowden now into punt, Bob, standing at his own 41-yard line. He's averaging a little over 45 per punt this year. Tarrant calls for the fair catch inside the 15-yard line. Georgia Tech's going to get its first offensive possession when we come back. Not playing this week. Somebody has the wrong script because homecoming, you're supposed to schedule a cupcake, aren't you? <laughs> I, I got that all wrong. 
I don't know. I think those days are, are over because homecoming is usually the middle of the season, so you're kind of into that conference play. Georgia Tech first down and 10 from their own 13-yard line. It's the first time they've touched the ball tonight. Flag down on the play. Nesbitt back to pass. Throws it up for grabs. And out of bounds, Demarius Thomas had no shot at catching that. Richard Carmichael is back there in coverage. And, uh, Thomas comes up limping a little bit. Offside. Number six. Five yards. Still first down. It's going to go against Jason Worlds. Well, that pass was incomplete, but you just saw Georgia Tech's passing game. <laughs> Josh Nesbitt to Demarius Thomas. I mean, Demarius Thomas has 26 of the team's 37 catches on the season. It's pretty much in line with last year, Bob, when he had 39 catches. The rest of the team had a total of 35. And there's the big, strapping, strong, and fast receiver out wide. First and five now. Watch. Fumble. And pounced on back at the nine yard line and still loose actually out of bounds. Embry Peoples appeared to have it momentarily but it's going to stay Georgia Tech football all the way back now at the nine yard line. They'll lose nine yards on the play. It'll be second and long. Well Bob when you have so many moving parts in option football that's bound to happen. right? Well and Georgia Tech really has become and wants to be a fullback quarterback keep team. They had some problems on some pitches down at Florida State. So when you make them execute the third phase of that option, you actually have a better chance of stopping them. Second and 14. Esbitt hands it off to Jonathan Dwyer, brought down immediately right near the line of scrimmage by Barquell Rivers. That's going to be a loss of one. It'll be third down and long for Georgia Tech. Jonathan Dwyer, the reigning ACC Offensive Player of the Year. This Virginia Tech defense last week against Boston College. You talk about a first half of defense. They gave up three yards and zero first downs in the entire first half against Boston College. Ooh, they say that this Virginia Tech defense is off a little bit this year. Third and 15. Snap. Play a game. Offense number nine. Half the distance. Still third down. So now each team has its own delay of game penalty. Paul <laughs> Johnson's team hasn't had much trouble scoring points. It's third down. Last week, 49 in that win on the road at Florida State. Third and 19 coming up. Dwyer in the backfield. Nesbitt keeps it. And he's going to be brought down after a gain of about three on the play by Cody Grimm, the weak side linebacker, 5'11", the redshirt senior. And it's going to be a punting situation now for Georgia Tech. Now. Interestingly enough, Bob, we, we didn't see the punter all last week for Georgia Tech down in Tallahassee. Now we see him early. That is amazing. They did not punt the football last week. Of course, Florida State only punted one time. But any time Virginia Tech's in this situation, Mark, you have to talk about punt block. They've only blocked one punt all year, but it was for a touchdown against Miami. Didn't go after this time. Hosley back deep. He's run back a punt this year. As he calls for the fair catch at the 42 yard line. Let's check in with Wendy Nix in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. Time now for a Taco Bell studio update. The number one team in the country hosting Arkansas at the Florida Gators, and that is Tim Tebow. He's looking for Deontay Thompson, who's wide open. 77 yards later, Florida will take a three point lead, but Arkansas has kicked the field goal, and we're all tied up in the fourth quarter. USC over Notre Dame. All right, Wendy, back here, first and ten. Good starting field position as Ryan Williams takes the handoff, plows his way over the 40, picking up three on the play. 
Well, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, two AFC West Division rivals battle in the trenches as Brandon Marshall and the Broncos take on Phillip Rivers and the Chargers. Broncos Chargers on ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern. Coverage beginning with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern. Man, have things turned around for Brandon Marshall after a pretty rough start there in Denver. How about Kyle Orton? Yeah. You talk about an unbelievable story now. <laughs> Kyle Orton going from the Bears to the Broncos. Working out pretty good. We're going to take a timeout. Be right back after this. Tailgated home. Slow down and grill with Kingsford Charcoal. Look at the tricycle race. Part of the festivities here at homecoming week at Georgia Tech. One of the great traditions. Uh, pretty good pit stop. Got in and out pretty quick there. Zeros on the scoreboard. Second and long for the Hokies. Ryan Williams brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Ajon Cross. He'll lose a yard on the play. Brad Jefferson also in on the neighborhood. Rob, you said earlier that Ryan Williams was going to have to adjust to being ill. And for younger players, it's tough. What do you mean exactly? Well, I just think as you mature, you learn to play through all those little nicks and pains and sicknesses. As a young guy, sometimes you have to feel great to go play. And I'm not saying he's maybe a little bit babied or a little bit spoiled. I'm just saying in general, young guys have a tougher time playing through minor injuries and sickness. Third down and eight. Taylor completes the pass, but it's short of the first down at the 35-yard line to Dyrell Roberts. He picks up five on the play. Mark, you notice this Georgia Tech defense. They are playing inspired football right now. And embarrassment sometimes is the greatest motivator. And we chronicled early, Paul Johnson had some negative things to say about his defense Sunday and Monday. But more importantly, these last two games have embarrassed this Georgia Tech defense, and I think they are playing with a lot of fire right now. And here to get off the field on third down. That's Jared Tarrant. Has already run a punt back, two of them actually, for a touchdown this year. And watches this one go over his head. Oh boy, the Hokies missed an opportunity, a golden one, to down it inside the five. It'll come out instead to the 20-yard line after the 35-yard punt. Well, Georgia Tech had that one stumble against Miami. They're five and one coming in. Let's see how they got to this point. They lost down in Miami since that time have won three straight games. And you see why this game is even more critical to Georgia Tech because Miami is an ACC game. So if you go down two games, you're out of the race. Where Virginia Tech, on the other hand, their loss is to an out of conference Alabama team. First down and 10 from the 20. Nesbitt on the keeper, and he picks up about four on the play. Rivers making the stop on the play for the Hokies. Here's what this game is all about. When you look at the ACC standings, if you go two games down, Bob, you said it, you're pretty much out of the race. Virginia Tech has the tiebreaker against Miami head-to-head, -head, so a win for the Hokies, and they're in very good position. And for both of these teams, the difficult part of their schedule when they walk out of this stadium today is behind them. Second down, about six to go. Hand off to Wright, and Wright with nowhere to go. Might have lost a yard on the play, and a flag down. And the left guard, number 70, Joseph Gilbert, Mark, holding John Graves, number 91. I mean, this Virginia Tech defensive line. Number 70 offense. 10 yards previous spot, still second down. This Virginia Tech defensive line, you know, you talk about beamer ball, you talk about block kicks, all those things. I think they've been known just as much for explosive six foot one, six foot two defensive linemen. You know, it seems like every year they have a six one or six two, 300 pound guy, and Bud Foster gets those guys to play as hard as anybody in the country. Yeah, one of the top defensive coordinators in the country. Second and 16. Oh, and another flag down to the field. This might be another delay. Part of the snap. Ball start. 71 offense. Five yards. Still second down. You know, when you talk about Bud Foster, Cam Chancellor, one of the DBs for Virginia Tech, told us he loves playing for Foster because 
He's a coach's player's coach, okay? He gets into it. If you don't believe me, this was Bud on the sidelines last year after a big play. Bob, he almost pulled a hamstring. <laughs> and then in the summertime, wakeboarding. <laughs> I mean, he's raised the bar for that coordinators. That looks pretty good now. He, he <laughs> looks pretty good on that thing. Nesbitt in trouble. The pass is caught, but there's a flag down in the play. The pass caught at the 31-yard line. Oh, oh. 70 offense. Half a distance. Still second down. Well, that offensive line struggling a little bit right now. Hey, Bob, uh, Bud Foster's raised the bar for defensive yeah, coordinators. I, I want to go I've back and look. What's that. that thing called, a wakeboard? Yeah. I want to go board. back and see now. That may not have been him on that Oh, thing. you think it's fake? That looked too good. I didn't <laughs> get a good enough look at his face. That might have been an imposter on that board. <laughs> no, nah, that was him because we, we joked about him with him yesterday. Tight. Talk about keeping up. That's smooth. That's smooth. That just looks a little too smooth to me. He There's a, something fishy. He had a good like driver. Get out in Colorado in that hot air balloon. <laughs> There's something fishy about that stuff. They give us to the fullback. The A back, Jonathan Dwyer, picks up two on the play. Cardero Thompson making the stop. The He's brought down by number 95. Well, so Aaron far. Thompson. One more look. I don't know, Bob. That's legit. Well, I'll tell legit. you what. I think he's got a good guy in the boat ahead of him, you know. As easy as that looks for him, it's easier right now defending this offense because of all the self-inflicted penalties by this Georgia Tech offensive football team. I mean, they have just had an unbelievable amount of offensive penalties since the start of this game. Third and 23 to go now. Nesbitt passing out of his end zone. Nobody even close to that one in Bud Foster's defense. Gets off the field on third down, and Bob kind of underscores in between gigs on the lake like that. He was visiting Georgia, learning how to defend that option during the summertime. Yeah, they spent a lot of time on Georgia Tech. You know, last year they won the game, but they gave up about 370 yards, and they went down and visited Georgia in the spring and just kind of clinicked each other. And normally early in the game, Mark, the triple option has the advantage because you don't adapt to the speed quickly enough. Anderson with the punt, down to the 45, takes Hosley, and he is met immediately. Nothing on the return after a pretty good punt of 38 yards. Virginia Tech in decent field position when we come back to Atlanta. Back in Atlanta, Bobby Dodd Stadium, historic Grant Field. Virginia Tech looking for its third consecutive win against the Yellow Jackets. First and ten. Taylor has it batted at the line of scrimmage. And it's picked off. Jason Peters deflected it and caught it. Wow. Mark, watch this play by Jason Peters. I'm going to let it roll. I'm not sure exactly where he is, but watch him bat the ball. Here he comes from over the nose. Bats the ball, then reaches out, stretches out, and makes the interception. It's going to be reviewed, but that was a great effort by the sophomore out of Baton Rouge right there. When you talk about a defense standing up for itself and making a play, that would be one if it stands. Everybody on this side say yellow. Everybody on this side say jackets. Here we go. Yellow. There's another look at it. Yellow. That's too close for me to call right there, Mark. I mean, great job of swatting that ball with his left hand, then extending out. Looks like he's got his arms underneath it. The key was coming up like he'd caught it. <laughs> he <laughs> now, sold it pretty now, well. Wait a second. He Those sold officials it. Are, yeah. <laughs> That's a tough it's angle. A great there. effort, I'll say that. And again. The call was ruled an interception on the field. This should tell us a little bit more. I don't think there's enough evidence, Mark, to overturn that call. 
Here it is. Rolling on the field stands. And you talk about reviews. How about in the Oklahoma-Texas game today? I don't think I've seen as many reviews in that game. They played the whole game on rewind, it seemed at times. That's but Georgia Tech's seventh interception of the season, courtesy of Jason Peters. And for Tyrod Taylor, just his fourth interception of the season. Check that second interception. Nesbitt. And he gains about four on the play. Bob, let's take a look at Georgia Tech's impact players. Mark in the triple option. It starts with the quarterback, but the fullback, Jonathan Dwyer. He gives Georgia Tech a home run threat every time he touches the ball. I mean, Virginia Tech took him out of it last year. We said earlier, when you talk about passing game, it is all about Demario Thomas. Four catches for over 50 yards. And a lot of credit to this Georgia Tech defense. They're playing well. Derek Morgan is their best defensive player. Rocking that bow tie again. <laughs> Second and six coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Has been under heat and brought down immediately by all world Jason Worlds. That's why he's all ACC. A loss of three on the play. We'll talk about him in the mold of Corey Moore and Daryl Tapp, two former greats at Virginia Tech. And I'll tell you what, they do a great job of. Watch Worrells right here. He's going to come down like he's going to take the fullback, but then he's going to give the quarterback a misread and jump up on the quarterback. Watch him. He closes. Josh Nesbitt thinks he's going to take the fullback, then he jumps upfield on the quarterback. Sets up a third and eight. Nesbitt keeps it, but not enough for the first down. He's about two yards short after a five-yard gain. John Graves makes the stop on the play for Virginia Tech. No brainer. No brainer. <laughs> Triple option football mark. They go for it on fourth down. Last week against Florida State. Went for it several times. They're six for eight on fourth down this season, Mark. Last week they were two for two against Florida State, so there wasn't even a hesitation here. I had a feeling that uh, but Foster knows that, that they're going for it. On the pitch, one man to beat, and they're not going to get it. Great pursuit. Anthony Allen actually got there, got it by a yard, pardon me. The way Virginia Tech plays this option, there's a lot of pressure on this free safety. Watch Cam Chancellor at 6'4", 230 mark. I mean, he covers a lot of ground there, but he gets a little bit outside the running back, and that's a tough open field tackle. But this guy right here, the scheme Bud Foster's using, is the most critical guy on the field for Virginia Tech. He has to make tackles in the open field. First and 10. That's a little play fake into heavy coverage and incomplete. I'm talking about there were three different players from Virginia Tech around Stephen Hill. Well, here's what's happening now. The Coastal Division title perhaps on the line tonight as Virginia Tech takes on Georgia Tech and coming up ahead, Davy Jones Locker, a revised definition of sorts to talk about with football implications and Bob Davey going to break it right down like it's never been broken before, stopping the option. I wonder how rating our ratings are doing on the Davy Jones locker. <laughs> now, do you think nationally that's carrying some impact? We've got to break that little treasure <laughs> chest open. <laughs> on the toss, this is Roddy Jones. And Jones stopped up. Number, 20, number 26, Cody Grimm, a gain of about three on the play. I bet you Wendy can break down the option a little bit for us. Wendy, back to you. That's right, Mark. This update again brought to you by Taco Bell and Florida on the ropes. Late in this one, Ryan Mallett to Greg Childs. And Arkansas will take the lead. The Gators have lost to an SEC West team for 10 straight years. They're in trouble. Trailing by seven. I wonder if this is Florida's Mississippi game from last year. Well, we is Tebow going to have to make another one of those impassioned speeches after the game, you think? Well... I hope not, but we had Arkansas early in the year, Mark, and Riot Mallet and those young receivers, they're an explosive offensive team. Back after this. At Georgia Tech.
On third and seven, Nesbitt under some heat and sacked back at the 48-yard line by Stefan Virgil. A loss of 13. And some Hokie fans that made the trip from Blacksburg liking it. Anytime you get Georgia Tech in a passing situation, it definitely favors the defense. That time, Bud Foster on the corner blitz, Stefan Virgil. And you know that boundary corner at Virginia Tech is a very prestigious position. I think they've had four All-Americans in a row that have played that boundary corner. Jesus. A lot of guys into the league. Aaron Hosley back deep on his own 10, but that's going to be the last play of the first quarter here in Atlanta at Bobby Dodd Stadium. This historic Grant Field with the Coastal Division perhaps on the line for both these teams. Tyrod Taylor has thrown a pick and he's having a tough time against an inspired Yellow Jacket defense. Back after this. 0 0 on the scoreboard. And will former Georgia Tech this December at the standout and College Hall of Fame member. Pat Swilling. Hall of Famer, Pat Swilling. Getting his award at midfield during the break. Part of homecoming festivities here at Georgia Tech. Fourth down for the Yellow Jackets, punting from their own 40. Osley standing on his own 10. And he'll watch it bounce. It takes a Yellow Jacket bounce out of bounds. At about the 12 yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for Virginia Tech. A 35 yard punt and nothing on the return. And part of the reason for Virginia Tech's great improvement, Bob, over the last five games, all five wins, has been Tyrod Taylor just getting much more comfortable and much more confident in the people around him. I think he does a great job, Mark, now of not taking off and scrambling but scrambling to look for the throw downfield. He's had many huge plays this year because secondaries can't stay in coverage long enough when he starts to scramble and he throws the ball down the field. Has yet to get it going here tonight. This is Oglesby gaining a few yards. Well, Bob, each quarterback's career has a defining moment. This might be it for Taylor against Nebraska a few weeks ago. And Mark, this was unbelievable. I mean, it went 85 yards in five plays with zero timeouts, but the 81-yard pass to Danny Cole, and then this play right here to Terrell Roberts, here's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, in past games, past seasons, as a young guy, he would have taken off and run right there. But he stays in the pocket, and it's so difficult to cover receivers for that extended period of time. Second and seven, there's Cole split wide. The give once again is to Josh Oglesby. Interesting that Oglesby would get the last two carries, Bob. Uh, Ryan Williams largely ineffective so far. Oglesby picking up five that time. Yeah, and Ryan Williams, Mark, averaging 122 yards a game coming into the game, 150 against Miami. Electrifying young running back, Josh Oglesby, whose dad was a running back at North Carolina. Probably a more solid all-around back, but not nearly as exciting with the ball in his hands. Third and two. Well, that's the old Tyrod Taylor, and the old Tyrod Taylor's pretty good, Bob. Gets the first down on a nice scramble up the sidelines. Good for 11 yards. Yeah, you can see why he was rated, Mark, coming out of high school. Tyrod Taylor, the number one dual threat in the country. Came down to Florida and Virginia Tech, and, I mean, he is really fast. Remember last year we had him up on the artificial surface at Boston College? I mean, he looks like he's a 4-3 kind of guy. That was a big first down off the scramble. Up to the 31. Little play fake. Taylor with a gaping hole up the middle and hit hard at the 36 yard line to pick up five as we go back to Wendy Nix. Mark, thank you very much. And we go back to the swamp. So much for Florida being on the ropes. The Gators aren't going to go quietly. Jeffrey Dimps on the carry. He'll take it in. And the Gators have tied it up. We've got four and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Tied at 20. No tie here, though. USC all over Notre Dame, 34 to 20. Back in the action, we have an injured player down to the field. That's Julian Burnett. Here's how he was shaken up a few moments ago. 
Yeah, Julian Burnett, a true freshman linebacker. Gonna see right there. Great tackle in the open field. Great effort. Made his first start against North Carolina. True freshman has really impressed the coaching staff. We'll see about his condition when we come back. There's something back under the lights in Atlanta, Georgia Tech. Virginia Tech with the ball, second down and five. Operating from their own 36 yard line. As the drizzle begins here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Oglesby over the 35. Stopped up by Ijon Cross. Already a little bit of a memorable day in college football when you look at one of the upsets already. Ohio State upended against Purdue today. Well, this is a huge opportunity today, Mark, for Virginia Tech. You know, a lot of people are asking who's the best one loss team in the country. Virginia Tech has a great opportunity, but it looks like they're going to have to do it without Ryan Williams. Uh, Josh Oglesby has been the back in the football game. Third and five. Incomplete and almost intercepted at the 45 yard line. It appeared to be tipped intended for Jared Boykin. But Morgan Burnett was I'll there tell to you, tip it. Excuse me, Mark. Maybe Paul Johnson knew what he was doing. I know he knew what he was doing with the quote early in the week about his defense saying they didn't look like they knew what they were doing. That has motivated. Something has really motivated this Georgia Tech defense. I mean, they are playing inspired football right here in the first half. Third punt of the night for Virginia Tech. Brent Bowden in. Tarrant back. He's run back two punts this year for touchdowns. And Bowden with a line drive at the 23. Tarrant with a nice return out to the 35. A 13 yard return of the punt. And you talked about the quote by Paul Johnson. Here's what he said. We have to be accountable as coaches when it looks like they don't know what they're doing. And he was really talking about. Georgia Tech substituted a lot of players, ran a lot of guys on and off the field. But let's think back a week ago now in that meltdown in Tallahassee. Florida State did not punt. They had 400 yards offense in the first half. What a tremendous motivator. And Dave Womack, we talked early. They needed confidence early in the game, Mark. And they have gotten confidence early in the game. From the 34. Nesbitt keeps it. And Nesbitt out to the 39, picking up five. You know, getting back to the situation with Georgia Tech's defense, it was interesting that Coach Womack, the defensive coordinator, looked at the glasses being half full, not half empty. He told the guys, hey, the bright thing is, the bright spot is that we only gave up 133 yards in the second half and only nine points. And the brightest thing, they won the game. It's always easier, Mark, to make those corrections after you win because the bottom line, everyone still feels good after you won the game. Second and five. Has been on the task to Allen. Anthony Allen, the Louisville transfer. Up down at the 42 yard line, three yards short of the first down. Cody Grimm makes the stop, and Nikos Brown as well. Well, if that name Cody Grimm or the surname sounds familiar, it's because it should be if you were a football fan in the D.C. area. Russ Grimm, his dad played with the Washington Redskins and the Cards in the NFL back in the day. His dad's assistant head coach at the Arizona Cardinals. His brother who played at Tech works for the Arizona Cardinals as well. And I think there's a younger brother that's a great lacrosse player, as was Cody in high school. On third and two, Nesbitt gets the first down and falls forward to the 48. Well, Grimm couldn't do anything about that one on the five-yard pickup by Nesbitt. Grimm, an interesting story, though, Bob. You mentioned his brother being a lacrosse player. Grimm, too, a great lacrosse prospect coming out of high school. He was recruited by Georgetown and Virginia and other lacrosse powerhouses. There he is, a little bit of an undersized linebacker, but Virginia Tech took a flyer on him. 
He walked on now on scholarship. Has been up top for Demarius Thomas. It's a jump ball, and one of the few times you won't see Thomas come down with it. Carmichael broke it up. Well, this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, Chris Berman and the guys preview week six of the NFL season. They'll discuss Eli Manning's homecoming in New Orleans as the New York Giants face the Saints. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM on ESPN at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Nesbitt 0 for 3 now passing. Mark, it's the first time all season Georgia Tech didn't score in the first quarter of the football game. Nesbitt keeps it himself and nowhere to go. That thing was plugged up and stopped dead at the 45 yard line. Might be a loss of one on the play. Chris Drager there first. And Virginia Tech's style of playing this option, much different than last week in Florida State's plan. Virginia Tech has a lot of people up there close to the line of scrimmage. They're going to make it really hard. I mean, the fullback has not even carried the ball in this game yet. They're going to make it really hard and force Georgia Tech to put that ball out on the perimeter, pitching it. They're going to try to take the fullback and the quarterback out of it. On third and long. Austin Barrick moving on the right side of the offensive line. Five yards, still third down. That's five penalties on offense in this football game for Georgia Tech. Well, self inflicted wounds are the toughest ones. Well, so much, Mark, with this offense, again, you cannot get in passing situations. You have to stay on rhythm. And in positive down and distance situations because they are not geared to throw the football in passing downs. Third and 17 for most teams that do passing. And that's what they do here. And miscommunication between Demarius Thomas, who broke the route off. And it's fourth and 17 on the incompletion. There it says it all, Mark. Georgia Tech offense, 19 plays, 16 yards, five penalties, and 28 yards. What a difference a week makes. But what a difference the scheme of Virginia Tech is making and the self-inflicted penalties by Georgia Tech. Fourth punt of the afternoon from Chandler Anderson under a little heat. Came after him a little bit that time, but... Ball bouncing harmlessly down at the 27 yard line. Well, last year, Josh Nesbitt said he remembers us losing the game, he says, because we virtually gave it away with bad turnovers. Trying to atone for that tonight against Virginia Tech. We'll be back. Computing research. And back at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Only four techs in the FBS football bowl subdivision Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. Texas Tech and Louisiana Tech. Ryan Williams back in the ball game on first and ten for the Hokies. Taylor with plenty of time. Runs out of bounds at about the 34 yard line. Picked up eight on the play. You know, this Virginia Tech offense. Hasn't really clicked here yet today, Mark, but they are one of the most improved offenses in the country. Last year, they were 103rd in the nation in total offense. Nobody knows that better than the Hokie fans. This year, they're number 54. And in the ACC conference games, I mean, they're averaging 37 points a game. So they are an improved team, and it all goes hand in hand with that guy under center, the quarterback. Tyrod Taylor hands it off to Ryan Williams. The leading rusher in the ACC coming in got two tough yards that time and uh, going back to Tyrod Taylor and his improvement he credits some of it to the fact that he's kept in line with the great lineage of quarterbacks at Virginia Tech including Aaron Brooks uh, and Michael Vick who he told me he spoke with recently he said that uh, Michael was making sure that I stay on top of my game especially this week against the Yellow Jackets. First down and 10. 7.45 to go in the first quarter. No score. Nice play fake by Taylor. And 
wide open for the first down at the 41 yard line. Nice catch by Dyrell Roberts. And Mark, that was a great job of Tyra Taylor taking something off that football. You know, there's a tendency, particularly when you're running to the right, a guy with a real strong arm just to rifle that thing. He made a nice soft throw right there to a wide open Darrell Roberts. First down and 10. The 41. over the right side of that offensive line stopped up after a gain of about two on the play as we approach the top of the hour look at what's happening now here in Atlanta total yardage story not too much of it most of it coming from Virginia Tech Georgia Tech with just 16 yards and coming up ahead on Davy Jones locker this week a revised definition with a football twist and schools colleges universities with metropolitan campuses kind of unique thing and uh, if you don't believe us look at those pictures nestled here in Bobby Dodd Stadium in the heart of Atlanta right off I-75 and 85 Williams with the reception made a nice move and Ryan Williams getting his giddy up on first down for the Hokies at the 23 a 15 yard game Derek Morgan made the stop on the play and that's the first chance You've had to see the real running style of Ryan Williams, Mark. Right here, nice little screen set up. Georgia Tech well defended. He jumps in and out of cuts. And I know it's really, really premature, but he kind of <laughs> does look like that old number 34 that made that number famous, Walter Payton. I'm talking about just his style yeah. of play. He's got a tattoo on his arm that says, Little Sweetness. In honor of Walter Payton, this is Tyrod Taylor who, by the way, was Ryan Williams' host on his visit to Virginia Tech a couple of years ago. Taylor gets six on the play. Now, Bob, when you're head coach, you make sure you set up a certain guy with a guy who's coming on his campus visit? Oh, no question, Mark. That's one of the most researched things you do. Because Research? You only have, you know, two days or two and a half days on campus, and you have to make sure that guy has a great time, and you have to make sure he's with someone that has common interest. And usually your best players are also your best recruiters. Worked out pretty good for Virginia Tech so far. Williams again on the handoff from Taylor. Cedric Griffin makes the stop after the gain of about two. This was an entirely different scene from a week ago when Georgia Tech came out guns blazing. Yeah, we had lightning strikes, an hour and 15 minute delay. And when we resume play, both teams actually scored on every one of their possessions in the first half. It was a shootout at its best. And Georgia Tech finally prevailing 49 to 44. In stark contrast to this, zeros on the scoreboard and zero yardage on that running play by Ryan Williams, stopped up by Derek Morgan and Cedric Griffin. Actually lost a one on the play. Fourth down coming up. No question. <laughs> That's a lot different than last week in Tallahassee, Georgia Tech offensively. But just as different has been this Georgia Tech defense. And that was a great third down stop right there, forcing Virginia Tech into a field goal situation. Matt Waldron from 34 yards out. And Waldron is true. He's now four of four from between 30 and 39 yards. And Frank Beamer's team gets on the scoreboard first with 4.01 to go in the first half of play. Well, Allstate good hands, net protection, and Allstate has donated $1.9 million to academic general scholarship funds since 2005. Three to nothing for the Hokies. Looking for their sixth consecutive win. They've won four out of the six times previously against Georgia Tech. Bob, this kind of tempo, this kind of pace to the game, which team does it favor? Or does it favor anybody? No, I think right now it's a little bit too early. Obviously, Paul Johnson right now, they're really struggling on offense. I mean, they have to eliminate the self-inflicted penalties. 
But anytime you play the triple option, anytime they can stay within one or two scores, they're still in the tempo of their offense. So there's no panic yet by Paul Johnson. I think this becomes a key drive right here, though, late in the first half for this Georgia Tech offense. You know, so far, 16 plays, excuse me, 19 plays, 16 yards offense in this game. It's a lot like that Miami game that Georgia Tech lost in down in South Florida several weeks ago. Peoples and Smith back deep for the kickoff return for Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets have yet to run back a kick for a touchdown this year. This is Peoples. And Peoples. Out to the 30 yard line. Well, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, two AFC West Division rivals battle in the trenches as Brandon Marshall and Denver take on Phillip Rivers in San Diego. Broncos Chargers on ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Coverage beginning with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Broncos undefeated at 6 0. Boy, that. Game last Monday is going to be a tough one to beat. It was beat. a great game down in Miami. <laughs> Give me some Wildcat, Bob Davey. <laughs> well, you're getting all the Wildcats where you want right here with this offense. <laughs> Esbitt keeps it. That, I believe, I'm told by my partner, is the quarterback lead out to the 38, and we'll lead our way to Wendy in the studio after the 11 yard game. Mark, thank you. We go back to check on the Gators. A missed opportunity here, though, for Arkansas. Alex Tejada wide left, missing the 38-yard field goal to take the lead. And the Gators will take advantage of the opportunity, courtesy of Caleb Sturges. It's official. Florida wins by three. Man, that was a great football game in Gainesville, and the Gators come back and win that thing. Two weeks in a row now, we see Florida I have a couple of close calls. Next week they take on a Mississippi State in Starkville. And there's a look at how short they are for the first down. Well, Florida gets by. And remember, the BCS standings come out after this weekend's games. Projections show that Florida would probably remain at number one. Bob, Texas won today, but not many style or beauty points. I just don't think in a game like that, Mark, that it matters that much. You know, the Texas-Oklahoma game with those kind of athletes all at its stake, it's not going to be real pretty. You know, just getting that win there was huge for Texas. Second down and short coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Has been looking to pass. For Thomas, pop, jump ball, advantage, Demarius Thomas. Mark, this guy does it every week. He has four catches over 50 yards on this season. He's six foot three, 225 pounds. Rashad Carmichael, really good coverage, other than that he never looks back for the football. That's just a big, strong man going up and making that play. Kind of a baby Calvin Johnson. <laughs> you can almost hear Thomas say, hey, give it to me. I got a little one. A 50 yard gain and a first down all the way down to the 13. Nesbitt on the toss. That's right. And right inside the five yard line. Second down and short coming up. A gain of close to nine on the play. Mark, I told you that the free safety Cam Chancellor is critical on the pitch. That time he's going to come on the pitch, but he's going to get caught up in traffic. Watch him right in the middle of the field right here. He's going to come downhill on the pitch, but watch what happens. He kind of gets caught up in there with the slot back, and that results in about a nine-yard gain. Second and one. Give it to the fullback, the first man through, Dwyer. And Dwyer looks like he's going to have enough to get the first down. It'll make it first down and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Jonathan Dwyer last year 
the ACC Player of the Year. And I know it's frustrating for, for Dwyer, Mark, because this, the way this Virginia Tech defense is set up with their defensive tackles, they take the fullback out of the game almost. So it's a frustrating night for him. It's going to be a quarterback keeper pitch game. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage and nowhere to go. Cam Chancellor, the guy you were referring to a few moments ago, Bob, that time didn't get caught up in traffic and made the play. Chancellor consistently grading out amongst the highest defenders for Virginia Tech week after week. Well, he's about six foot four, 230 pounds, 34 starts, Mark. They tell me this guy is not a good basketball player, but a great basketball player. Testament to his athletic talents, and he holds the lunch pail that Bud Foster likes to give up. Just doesn't seem right giving that lunch pail to a basketball player. <laughs> he must be a different breed because he's tough. Dwyer tough, but not tough enough to get in. It's going to be third down in goal. They're going to spot it about six inches short of the goal line. Fair to say that the Hokies stuffing Dwyer so far, the fullback? No question, Mark. They stuffed him last year. I mean, the game last year in, uh, you know, Blacksburg, I think he had about 12 yards in that football game. He's run four times for six yards tonight. Third and goal. Nesbitt. Touchdown. That has to be so frustrating for Bud Foster, Mark, because they played great defense. The one jump ball to Demarius Thomas, and Georgia Tech's going to go in at halftime with a lead in this football game, which is amazing. Blair in for the extra point, knocks it through, and Georgia Tech leads 7-3. to three. The two highest scoring offensive teams in the ACC in a defensive battle. Back to Atlanta right after this. It's a challenge to stop this triple option. The first thing you have to do is stop the fullback. I think Virginia Tech's done an excellent job of that just by alignment. The second thing, you have to attack the quarterback. It's tough to tackle a big, strong Josh Nesbitt, but the toughest thing to me and what this game will turn into tonight is taking away the pitch, particularly when you have a blocker out there. People don't realize how difficult this is to play through a blocker and make a play on the ball carrier and chance Cam Chancellor, Virginia Tech's free safety, is going to be responsible for that pitch a lot tonight. That's the key to this football game, particularly the way Bud Foster has schemed against Paul Johnson. Right, and, uh, back deep, it's Tyrell Roberts and Wilson. David Wilson on the return, has an alley. Wilson with a nice move out near midfield at the 49-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. Coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, the latest on an injured Sam Bradford. The Irish look to end their skid against USC and reaction from the Gators who struggle in the swamp. We'll see you back here for the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. All right, Wendy. First down and 10 from midfield. Virginia Tech with two timeouts remaining. 24 seconds to work with, perhaps getting in field goal range, one of their ambitions right now. Flag down, and this could come back. Whatever results, the pass incomplete. Mark, it's going to come back. Obviously, a holding penalty. 70 offense. 10 yards for this spot. Still first down. The offense struggling so far in the first half for Virginia Tech. Just three points on the board. Now this after scoring 48 last week in a win against Boston College. It'll be a first down in 20 coming up now from their own 40 yard line. Timeout time out called by Virginia Tech. Well, Florida getting by a big day in college football for the number one team and 
Ohio State upset earlier today Bob Davey against Purdue Virginia Tech what are their possibilities of playing in the national championship Yeah, Mark I mean it's early in the season but they're at a crossroads right now Virginia Tech I mean obviously if they can win this game they're going to be a huge favorite to win the ACC win the ACC championship game the way this league is divided Atlantic and coastal and they enter back into the national championship picture and talk so if you're going to lose in college football lose early because you have time to work your way back Let's look at the top 10. Now the Coastal Division in the ACC really loaded with the top three teams in the conference. Taylor backside pressure. Well, this guy can escape. Getting a little bit of help. And runs out of bounds at the 43-yard line with two seconds to go. A three-yard gain on the play. You know, last week in their win against Boston College, he scrambled around for about 15 seconds on the clock and then threw a perfect strike to Danny Cole for a touchdown. So no play is ever dead with him. Yeah, and that's the that's the difficulty mark for the defense staying in coverage. But I am very, very impressed with this Georgia Tech defense. They have come out tonight, accepted the challenge, and just played with great energy here in this first half. Taylor heaves this one downfield. This will end up in the end zone. And it's intercepted in the end zone by Morgan Burnett. That's his fourth interception of the season. And that punctuates the end of the first half of play. Georgia Tech leading 7 to 3. Homecoming week here at Georgia Tech. We thought it would be a high scoring game, but so far it's only seven to three. As we go back to Wendy in the studio, Wendy, it's like, you know, popcorn, a lot of potential. Some pop, but some don't. Let's go back to you at the Outback Steakhouse Report. Welcome back to college football on ESPN primetime Virginia Tech trailing Georgia Tech seven to three in stark contrast to last week where there was a whole bunch of offense on the field between Georgia Tech and Florida State down in Tallahassee as we go all axis. Mark you talk about last week the quarterback Josh Nesbitt. You know, this is a great scheme. Make no mistake about it, but it does come down to players, and it comes down to tackling. Watch D Josh Nesbitt on the option. The linebacker from Florida State really ends up in great position, but Josh Nesbitt makes him miss right there and then creases it for a touchdown. But you compare this week to last week and all those statistics, there's only one statistic that matters, Mark. Let me guess. The score? The scoreboard. <laughs> Here's what it looked like tonight so far. Well, Virginia Tech has made it very difficult inside on the fullback and the quarterback. Just their scheme of defense, they have really loaded it up. I look for this game in the second half to be much more of a perimeter offensive game for, for, Georgia, for Georgia Tech. Getting the ball out on the perimeter, Mark, pitching that football. They had one big play in the passing game downfield to Demarius Thomas for 50 yards. As Georgia Tech will get possession here to start the third quarter. They won the toss and deferred to the second half. Short kick out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. That's where Josh Nesbitt will take the range of this offense for Georgia Tech. Mark Jones along with Bob Davey chopping it up here under the lights in Atlanta at Bobby Dodd Stadium in a game in the ACC's Coastal Division that means a lot for both teams for different reasons. Two losses for Georgia Tech. They're pretty much out of the race. So says Paul Johnson for Virginia Tech. Bob, they win tonight and the division's pretty much on ice. Yeah, Mark, I mean, both these teams, the strength of their schedule will be behind them after this football game. But you have to love the effort of Georgia Tech's defense. After what happened a week ago in Tallahassee, I mean, this football team is playing very well defensively. They're the reason Georgia Tech's ahead in this game. They've played inspired football so far. 
Wire about four yards on first down. Look at the first half numbers. And it's amazing. I mean, 88 yards total offense for Georgia Tech. 51 yards passing on one pass. Five offensive penalties, but Mark, they are ahead on the scoreboard, seven to three. Last week, they had those unbelievable offensive stats, but they were trailing at Florida State, 35-28. Great point. Jonathan Dwyer in the backfield. That's Anthony Allen in motion. He takes the toss, getting to the edge. Allen got to the perimeter and gets the first down, brought down to the 40. Bob, it's just as you were talking about, a perimeter-type game in the second half. Mark, because Virginia Tech is packing it inside, if you look out on the perimeter, there's not much defense out there. This is a great answer by Paul Johnson. You see the free safety chancellor running out there on the pitch, but that is a long way to go. When you pitch the ball directly from the quarterback to the back, it gets out there so much faster than if you run the option. But that is a result of how Virginia Tech schematically is packing people inside. Pick up 16 on the play, first down and 10. Dwyer on the handoff, first man through down inside the 35, picked up five on the play. So, Bob, subsequently, what's the adjustment that Virginia Tech makes if Georgia Tech tries to hit that edge? Well, I don't think Virginia Tech Bud Foster will panic yet. I mean, it's going to have to be a reoccurring problem. I think Virginia Tech will be fine, but just as this flow of this game goes, the fullback is going to be very difficult to establish. No team in the ACC gains more yards per game than this Yellow Jacket offense. On second and five, Nesbitt keeps it. The quarterback lead, and Nesbitt inside the 10, first and goal, Georgia Tech. A 31-yard pickup before Porch pushed him out of bounds. Mark, we talk how important Cam Chancellor is the safety. Watch the safety right here, and he is going to get chopped. He is up there close to the line of scrimmage. Watch the slot back come right there and block him. They have that thing schemed perfectly right there, Mark. Boom. Great block, Mark. And when you talk Fire. about low blocks, that's what I'm talking about, low blocks below the below the knees. Here's Dwyer on the carry on first and goal. Still moving. Boy, a great effort by Jonathan Dwyer. You see where they spot the ball. Just inches shy of that goal line. He picked up three, but it was a hard-earned three yards. It'll be second down and goal. It's second down and goal. Bud Fosters, that signal is, this offense is driving me crazy. <laughs> I've stood right there and felt like making the same signal, I promise you. On second and goal coming up. Nesbitt. Touchdown. It's a chess game, Mark, and any time you give Paul Johnson time at halftime to go in, settle down his offense, make the adjustments, now it's going to come back to Bud Foster making some adjustments. Well, for Nesbitt, Bob, that's his second touchdown of the night. The eighth rushing one of the season for him. He was the one that said that he hates the way last year's game went because they beat themselves, he feels. Well, so far, Josh Nesbitt is lighting up the night here in Atlanta, Georgia. They are pumping up the volume here in Atlanta. I'd crowd say, getting hyped. Is that not the theme song of college football <laughs> crowds now? That's, the That's overtaken like we will, we will rock you <laughs> in some of those classics, huh? You, you're scaring me with how topical you are. You are on, I'm a, you are Mr. News. You yeah. know what's going on. Well, we're going to get on Pakistan here in a few minutes, man. <laughs> Here's the kickoff, a short one, bouncing at the 20. That's Roberts on the return. Dyrell Roberts, and Dyrell is ready to dial it in. 
still on his feet and finally brought down at the 27 yard line. And some problems are not fixable if you're Georgia Tech. Kickoff coverage has been a huge problem. And Darrell Roberts, number two in the nation, Mark, 98 yards against Alabama, 76 against Nebraska. He better put that football away and tuck a little closer to his body there, but that's an explosive return at a key, key time. Yeah. Trying to get some of that momentum back. Taylor on the move. Tyrod Taylor tiptoeing out of bounds at the 20-yard line. This defense has been reinvigorated and reborn tonight for Georgia Tech, Bob. Yeah, Mark, and isn't that the great thing about sports in general? As bad as it was last week, that pendulum swings, and you get another chance to go play the next week. And this Georgia Tech defense, Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator, has to be congratulated for this effort so far in this game. But what a difference, huh? Sure is. We talked to Derek Morgan, number 91, as well, and he said that he told his teammates they've got to be accountable. A very impassioned speech to his defensive teammates about getting the job done this week. This is Ryan Williams, who was slowed down in the first half, not only by the Yellow Jacket defender spot, but by the sickness that has slowed him down over the last several days. Didn't look to be himself, the same guy we no, saw Mark, take. I agree. I mean, and, and again, credit to this Georgia Tech defense. I mean, they have played very physical, but I am on the Ryan Williams bandwagon based on what I watched on tape. Third and two. Williams stuffed. Not sure that he got it. Cedric Griffin was there to make the stop. He was the first one, the team's leading tackler. And it's going to be fourth down and about three to go. Cedric, on, excuse me, Cedric Griffin, a very talented, undersized linebacker at five foot eleven, stepped up in that hole right there, number fifty-four. They're going to go for it here on fourth. So three of seven on fourth downs this year. Williams, great second effort. It might have been enough to just get that first down. Wow, that was a very interesting spot. Williams comes up short. Mark, these spots are reviewable. Uh, if we can take another look at that, let's just check where that football. You can see right there, man. He's that guy wants a review. Well, the defense comes up big for Georgia Tech. Well, let's take a look and see where this football ends up. Ryan Williams, a strong runner at 205 pounds. Get to about the 21. Came up a touch short. Give it to Dwyer, the fullback. Jonathan Dwyer picks up about three on the play. Jonathan Dwyer has been the cornerstone of this offense, and Bob, it was interesting when we met with him prior to the Florida State game when Paul Johnson took over as head coach. Johnson ironically recruited him when Johnson was still at Navy, and of course, you know, Dwyer says, oh, I'm big on marching at 6 a.m. in the morning in the uniform, so he chose Georgia Tech, and ironic that Johnson would end up ultimately at Georgia Tech and playing in this wishbone. There's Anthony Allen. That's the same play that had success earlier. Not as much this time. Chancellor made the tackle, but a pickup of four on the play. This defense, though, for Virginia Tech, statistically, Bob, not where they usually are nationally, but still a very stout one. A lot of that has to do with the system that continues to be successful run by Bud Foster. No, no question, Mark. I mean, anytime as a player you want to play for someone and you want to be a part of something that's different and special, and that's what Bud Foster has established here at Virginia Tech. I mean, there is great pride in playing defense for the Hokies. Give us to Dwyer, and Dwyer gets the first down. And uh, we talked about Bud Foster, and this week inside Davy Jones' locker, we're going to talk about the coaching staff. And you know, 
Bob, I looked in my little dictionary here. I like to carry, you know me. <laughs> yeah. I like to dig into it. <laughs> Continuity is defined as, well, my contacts are a little tough. Let's, let's throw up the definition on the on the screen and, and see what the definition for continuity reads in just a moment. But it's interesting when you talk about the togetherness of the staff. Nesbitt up top for Thomas, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Dorian Porch. And Virginia Tech catches a break defensively. Mark, that is a huge turnover right there. Tyler Melton, the receiver, looked like he was open. Darian Porch with that ball hanging up in the air had enough time to rally and make that play. A big turnover for Virginia Tech defense. Right on cue, Mark, when we were talking about continuity and defense. No panic in that defense. They made a play, and Ryan Williams trying to make a play. Ryan Williams, no panic. No one to stop him. Touchdown, Hokies. Virginia Tech keeping it on the cool. 66 yards for the score. Mark, how quickly this football game changed. Excellent blocking up front. And the freshman tailback, that flu just went away. <laughs> well, yeah, when he flew by Georgia Tech. Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter, and Virginia Tech now to within four points. A career-long run for Ryan Williams, his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. And Bob, uh, here's a look at the definition of the continuity thing we were talking about when it comes to Virginia Tech. It's defined as uninterrupted duration or continuation, especially without essential change. How well, does that apply in football now? Let me tell you something. Uh, you I love Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> right. But you know what? When it comes to the uh, definition of continuity, I'm going to throw that Webster's Dictionary away because <laughs> Virginia Tech is the definition of continuity, and particularly at the key positions. Frank Beamer, Bud Foster, their strength coach, Mike Gentry, I believe it's their 24th season. Brian Steinspring, it's his 14th season as the offensive coordinator. Mark, what that translates to is no panic. No panic. And right, these last two plays were a perfect illustration of that. You know, Virginia Tech down 14-3. All the momentum to Georgia Tech. They get the interception. They get the big offensive play. They're right back in it. But it also translates to what happened last season when they had all those young players. It translates to this season, Mark, when they lose their first game. There's a calmness. There's a confidence with continuity yeah. because nobody panics. Everybody knows the expectations. They certainly are the definition of continuity. There's Steinspring up top, the offensive coordinator for the Hokies who in two plays really turned the complexion of this game around. The interception and then the long run by Ryan Williams. Oh. And you talk about not being able to get out of your own way. Kick returner Embry Peoples blew a tire too. He lost his shoe back at the 10 yard line. Looked like he was almost pushed down by his teammate Orwin Smith. Number 17. Well, this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, Chris Berman and the boys preview week six of the NFL season. They'll discuss Eli Manning's homecoming in New Orleans. NFL Sunday Countdown presented by IBM on ESPN at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Now we'll see how Josh Nesbitt rebounds from that interception he threw on the last possession. Allen on the toss again. And Allen brought down at the 21 yard line. Got a good block on the edge from Roddy Jones, and he picks up seven. Boy, a great effort by Jason Worlds. 260 pounds, Mark. Another in those lines. It's a Virginia Tech defensive end. Watch him right here from inside out. That's a great effort. And again, Chancellor up in there, the free safety. Worlds told us he got a call from Corey Moore, who told him that, hey, it's your job to be the best ever to come out at that position at Virginia Tech. 
That's a little bit of pressure. On second and three, Dwyer gets the first down. Out to the 26-yard line. He picks up five. Both teams getting a little bit more of their offensive rhythm here early in the second half. It's a great setting for a college football game, isn't it? You right here in the heart of Atlanta. A lot of people weren't sure how this triple option would adapt the people in Atlanta, a pro sports town, if they would really embrace this triple option. Mark, they embrace winning is what they embrace. They sure do. Here's Dwyer. Who's a winner as the conference player of the year last year? Grim making the stop after a gain of about six. And, you know, sometimes it's a little unique for student athletes going to school in a metropolitan area. And we had a chance to speak with defensive end Derek Morgan at Georgia Tech. And he said that, strangely enough, hey, we're kind of insulated from all that's going on in this jewel of the South, Atlanta, you know, with the movie yeah. stars and, you know, the, the artists that come to the game sometimes, Ludacris and some of those cats. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. You got the best of both worlds. Mark Gain of two on the play by Dwyer. You get back to that point of, you know, schools in big cities. Let me tell you something. When I was at Texas A&M for nine years in College Station, Texas, which is the exact opposite. When I was at Notre Dame for eight years in South Bend, which is the exact opposite. That's what you told the kids all the time, like Derek Morgan. You said, it doesn't matter if you go to Atlanta or L.A. You're going to do the same things in College Station day to day that you're going to do in Atlanta and L.A. You're going to study. You're going to go to class. You're going to sit in your apartment at night. You don't have the kind of money to go out and spend in Atlanta anyhow. Yeah. So you might as well come to College Station, Texas, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you got me signed already. Oh, I was rolling right there, baby. <laughs> you went back into back into mode right hey, there. <laughs> it, it, Mark, it clicked in. Uh -huh. The moment you brought up Derek Morgan's <laughs> comment, it just confirmed all those things I sold when I was in those small marketplaces, uh -huh. right? You're the Terminator, man. I heard about you. Get well, into the living hey, room. I'm going to be coming after your son, Shea, now, right. the basketball player. Well, you have to come through me. That's good. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this uh, really a unique setting in the city of Atlanta and uh, yeah, Morgan told us that hey we just go about our business on the field and they're taking care of it on the field today. This is Lions with his first carry of the ball game. Preston Lions spelling Jonathan Dwyer. He picks up three on the play. One thing you really like about this offense Mark. I do as a coach, you know, things all of a sudden there with Virginia Tech getting the interception, the huge play to Ryan Williams, Williams it was a little chaotic, but this kind of offense with these slow ball control kind of drives, it settles everything down, I think, for Georgia Tech. Second down and six coming up. Dwyer back in the ball game. Breaks one. Jonathan Dwyer still on his feet. Down to the 25-yard line. A missed tackle by Cody Grimm allowed the 34-yard gain in the first down. Mark, Georgia Tech is, well, look at the big split right here, first of all. Now, they're going to take the tackle down. Watch the defensive end close, but he takes the quarterback. Georgia Tech is running the fullback a little bit wider right there. Then they crack the free safety chancellor. They're taking the fullback. They're running him a little bit wider. Virginia Tech going to have to bring that defensive end down on the fullback. On the toss. This is right. He's brought down after a gain of about two on the play. Good tackle by Grimm and Cam Chancellor. Boy, that safety's real busy in this kind of defensive scheme. That was an excellent play by Cody Grimm, though, Mark. Cody Grimm's up there at strong safety. Watch him, number 26. They're going to arc block on him. This is really difficult. We said that before. To have a blocker on you, still able to shed that blocker and make the play on the football and force it back inside to Cam Chancellor. That was an excellent play by Cody Grimm right there. So it's up a second down and eight. Has been handed off to the first man through. That's Preston Lyons, who was met immediately. Might have gotten a yard on the play, maybe two. That's Foster's defense under duress right now. Knows the ball resting just outside the 22 yard line with 3.11 to go in the third quarter. Third and six to go for Georgia Tech. And it's four down territory for Georgia Tech. So this third and six mark, I think it's a running down. They run the football twice here. Dwyer in the backfield. Nesbitt keeps it. 
Had a nice gaping hole and all the way down to the 13. First down, Yellow Jackets. An eight yard gain. Mark, I talked about how important the free safety Cam Chancellor was. Paul Johnson now figured out. Watch the slot back right here, number 20, Roddy Jones. Arc and block the free safety. It's all about adjusting those blocking schemes to how you're playing run support. We saw this happen a little bit last week when Georgia Tech uh, adjusted. Went on to win against Florida State. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up. First man through is Dwyer, stopped immediately by Cardero Thompson. A one yard gain on the play. Second down and nine coming up. Tyrod Taylor just uh, cooling his heels on the sideline, looking to get back in the game. But boy, this offense really chewing up a lot of time on the clock by Georgia Tech. Bud Foster this week, they moved Anton Exum. A freshman free safety. They moved him from free safety to quarterback to try to give the defense a look. But man, it's hard to get a look like you're getting with Josh Nesbitt running right now. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Great toss to right. Touchdown. It's time for Bud Foster to change his plan because they are getting a blocker on Cam Chancellor. Watch number 18, Anthony Allen. They bypass the strong safety. That is very tough in the open field, Mark, with a blocker on you. That much grass. It's time for Bud Foster to change it up. Paul Johnson has figured it out. High snap. Well, right now, Paul Johnson is playing chess. Everyone else is playing checkers, right with the right stuff. Tech with the lead. With a win tonight would be right in the thick of the division race with Virginia Tech and the University of Miami. You think Georgia Tech will squib this kick? Mark, I doubt that they're going to kick it deep to Tyrell, Tyrell Roberts again. I guess they did. Had a big return last time. Down to the 30 yard line of the Yellow Jackets. And looks poised and ready for another nice kickoff return. This time down to the 43 yard line. Mark, why would you kick that football again to Dyrell Roberts, though? <laughs> Maybe they'll talk that over during this break. We'll be right back. The city of Atlanta, a glow at night. College football primetime on ESPN. Georgia Tech leading by 11. The Hokies, though, with good starting field position on this drive with 128 to go in the third period. Ryan Williams went 66 yards the last time Virginia Tech had the ball. All the way for the score. We'll see what they do here. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor just playing with the defense and chased out of bounds finally at the 46. Well this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football two AFC West Division rivals battle in the trenches Denver San Diego Broncos Chargers on ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8 30 p.m. Eastern coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 7. You know, Mark you talk about that NFL Monday Night game you have to be thinking and feeling really bad for Sam Bradford tonight don't you. Yeah. Comes back to Oklahoma just a great young man goes down again today with the shoulder injury. Same shoulder. Nightmare decision and season for Sam Bradford. Little counter to Ryan Williams, but nowhere to go. Stopped up at about the 44 yard line by Cedric Griffin. One of the most underrated players in the entire conference. And it's a three yard loss on the play. 35 seconds to go in the third. This is a huge third down, obviously, but also because this Georgia Tech offense has heated up. They have 157 yards of offense in the third quarter. Virginia Tech has to keep the football away from them, Mark. Third and nine. Pass protection has been an issue for Virginia Tech. And they heat up Taylor.
Derek Morgan with the sack. And a great way to end the period for Georgia Tech. The defense is back in the ATL. Happier times for the Sooners there. Roy Williams went on to be a first round pick by the Dallas Cowboys. Now he plays for the Cincinnati Bengals who are tops in the AFC North. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings moment number 20. You know this is the first right footed punter for Virginia Tech since 1995. They have all lefty punters. A string of walk on punters too that have gotten the job done. The fair catch called by Tarrant. A 29 yard effort nothing on the return. Virginia Tech undefeated in conference play coming in Georgia Tech one loss in the Coastal Division that one coming on the hands of the Miami Hurricanes who are two and one. So Virginia Tech Georgia Tech and Miami figuring prominently in the standings of uh, Virginia two and oh right now in the Atlantic Conference. Boston College with a big win today over North Carolina State bouncing back from last year's last week's collapse in Blacksburg. They got blown out. This is Roddy Jones. And Jones stopped by Cam Chancellor. Bob, you know, last year in the ACC, there are critics that say that Georgia Tech just caught people off guard and by surprise with this wishbone. In the second year, they seem to be having a lot of success. Yeah. Mark, I don't buy that argument at all. I mean, and I think that's a sound argument for someone that hasn't defended it, that could say that, that you become more familiar with it. But also, Paul Johnson now sees how you're going to defend him mm -hmm. so he can make adjustments. This is a sound, sound offense, Mark, that has an answer for just about everything. Second and five, they give it to Dwyer up the middle, falling forward to the 45 yard line. He picked up three, it'll be third down. And about two to go. And what about players like Jonathan Dwyer? I mean, how tough is it to get running backs to play in this system? Well, I think that's going to be, as we move forward, the question that Paul Johnson will have to answer is Josh Nesbeth, Dwyer, uh, uh, Demarius Thomas, their wide receiver, their big three on offense, we're already here. Highly recruited guys to play in a pro offense. But I'll tell you what, he will find the right players to run this offense. This offense will be extremely successful here. Third down and two coming up. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Boy, that's going to be close. First down marker resting just beyond the 47. <laughs> and this will be very interesting if they are short, Mark, because true to form, Paul Johnson always goes for it on fourth down. In this situation right now at 21 to 10 with the ball where it is, It'll be very interesting to see because it looks like it's short. By inches. Oh, they gave him the first down. Wow. <laughs> that extra roll. <laughs> Guess you got to get right the angle on it, right? First down for the Yellow Jackets. It's all in the rotation, Bob. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to look at that again when we came back. Come back now. And a flag. All start. All hits. Wow. Five yards. Go first down. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, Frank's been around a long time. I mean, that cock of the head right there is, I haven't seen that before. Looked like he just lost in three-card Monty or something. You know, we talk about all the technology these two tech teams playing, all that's riding on these games. Doesn't it seem like there should be a, a more efficient, scientific, scientific way than yeah. just bringing out that 10-yard chain? Yeah, I mean, there is some margin for error in that thing. Now. Something stay old school, man. First and 15. On the reverse, this is the speedster, Stephen Hill, the freshman. And he's pushed out of bounds, about a yard short of the first down by Stephen Virgil. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Thank you very much. Alabama hosting South Carolina. Stephen Garcia, uh-oh, picked off by Mark Bear, and he's going to go a long way if you're counting that 77 yards. Alabama leading the Gamecocks by 10. 
All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. It was Alabama that defeated Virginia Tech here in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome, uh, just down the road a little bit. First game of the season for both teams. After the 14 yard gain, Nesbitt on the pitch and he put it on the ground. Still loose and Georgia Tech recovering it. Marcus Wright saw it bounce free. It's going to be a loss of one. And if there's one area where Georgia Tech really struggles, Mark, I think it is Josh Nesbitt when he pitches that football on the third element of that option. They, you know, we've had him the last two weeks. That's probably your best chance with a turnover against them is to make them pitch that football. So it's up a third down and two. Nesbitt told us when we met with him that when they first started running this offense, they fumbled it a lot. They looked terrible. And he gets the first down here. They've improved a lot, Bob Davey, since the first few drills with this triple option. And, you know, it really is remarkable. I mean, Josh Nesbitt with his, was a guy who threw the ball every down in high school. He was in a shotgun offense. He really wanted to go to Georgia. They recruited him as a linebacker or a safety. But he comes here to Georgia Tech. It's only been, what, about a year and a half they've been in this offense? It really is remarkable. You have to give this young man a lot of credit right here. First down and 10, approaching 11 minutes to go. Jones in motion. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Still on his feet. A great effort by Nesbitt. And another Georgia Tech first down. Nikos Brown finally made the tackle, but a 12-yard pickup on the play. Mark, we met with him yesterday, and you said the same thing. Kim Belton, our director, Jeff Evers, said the same thing when we left that meeting. When he left, he's a lot thicker, <laughs> a lot bigger in the upper body than he looks in his pads. Yeah. I mean, you see him in street clothes now. He is packed together. It looks like a linebacker. On the toss, Peebles. And Peebles brought down shy of the 25-yard line. Well, this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, Chris Berman and the guys look at week six of the NFL season. Eli Manning's homecoming to New Orleans. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM on ESPN at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Now, Bob, I don't sleep on your stuff on ESPN.com. You said if you ever came back as a coach, you'd run this offense. I'm not going to let you come back as a coach, yeah. but why would you run this offense? Man, you're seeing it right here. I mean, they take your will away. I mean, it's a schematic advantage. You can truly out-scheme people in this offense. Now, there's trade-offs, Mark. There's negatives to everything. Obviously, there's negatives. But just from an X and O standpoint, this is the most difficult to defend. Nesbitt gives it to the first guy through. That's Jonathan Dwyer, who picks up about two yards. Let's go back to that third down conversion when the ball was turned a little bit and Georgia Tech got the first down. Do you see how big it is? Because how much time gets taken off the clock if you just keep a possession going in this offense? I mean, this is the total ball control offense. Yeah, right here. Let's look at it again. A little spin. <laughs> wow. What's an inch or two between friends? Third and four coming up. Peoples getting to the edge and brought down shy of the 20-yard line. It'll be fourth down and short for Georgia Tech. It's a Cam Chancellor tonight, Mark. I mean, he has the toughest job on this football field, as we said from the first snap of the game. He is playing with great effort now. That's why he has the lunch pail that Bud Foster gives to the most tenacious player on his Virginia Tech defense. Fourth down, Georgia Tech one for one on fourth downs tonight and seven for nine on the season. A little bit of motion on that left side of the line. Look, I think that's going to be offside on Virginia Tech. I think the defensive end. And Nikos Brown was out there. Offside. Defense. Number 47. In the neutral zone. Five yards. Hilly was also a first down. Well, that name Brown, a famous name in music circles, his dad Chuck Brown, uh, the godfather of go go music, which is big in the <laughs> Virginia and D.C. area, came out with a hit song back in the day, uh, Bustin' Loose. He busted loose a little too early on that play. 
thought you might become a little James Brown right there. <laughs> huh? Some of the coaches actually have his dad CD. Defense trying to change the tune right now on Georgia Tech's offense. Dwyer with nowhere to go right there, but the clock running under eight minutes to play now in the fourth quarter. First half of this football game, Georgia Tech one play the whole first half. The long pass to Demarius Thomas. Second half, you've seen the true triple option at work. Second half, Virginia Tech only with one play. Ryan Williams, the long touchdown run after the interception. It's been two opposite kind of halves as far as offense. Look at the production in the second half. Rushing yards by Georgia Tech. Nesbitt keeps it in an Allen to toss. It's loose again. It's on the ground. Virginia Tech has the ball. Devon Morgan comes up with the loose ball and with 719 to go Virginia Tech still alive those problems continue Mark pitching the football that time they come out and pitch it Rashad Carmichael knocks it out Davon Morgan now recovers let's watch it Virginia Tech makes them execute the whole triple option excellent play by the corner number 21 Rashad Carmichael First down and 10, 7.19 to go. Nesbitt with the turnover. Tyrod Taylor had his defining moment earlier this season against Nebraska, leading his team in a comeback victory. In the dying seconds, can he do it again here? Great touch pass complete to Danny Cole for the first down at the 41-yard line, a pickup of 18. Virginia Tech with all three of its timeouts remaining. Right now, we're going to test Tyrod Taylor, Mark. We've talked about maybe one of the most improved quarterbacks in the country, much more polished in the pocket. Well, obviously down 21-10. It's going to be all about the passing game, and don't forget their problems with pass protection. It all starts there for Virginia Tech. Taylor on the rollout. Going to take it himself. That's why they call him T-Mobile. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And now let's see who's winging it. Brought to you by Pizza Hut Wing Street. Tyrod Taylor is winging it. 6-10. Kind of you're winging it. Well, he came into this game with 80 passes in a row without an interception. There's plenty of time left, though. Second and five. Ryan Williams with a gaping hole up the middle. Another first down for the Hokies inside the 35 where Morgan Burnett makes the tackle. Well, he is explosive. And they talk about this young guy plays with passion. I mean, he's not only fast and quick. I mean, he's got a great attitude as well. Frank Beamer called him maybe the most complete back I've ever seen, which is a glowing comment. Think about the guys that he's coached. Ogles be in the ball game now. Got a great block. Taylor still alive and brought down at the 25 yard line. David Wilson cleared a few extra yards for him at the 30 and he picked up eight. You see what Virginia Tech is doing Mark. They're rolling Tyrod Taylor out because of the pressure. They still get excellent pressure Georgia Tech. But this guy is as dynamic as Ryan Williams carrying the football. But Virginia Tech's offensive line really struggles in pass protection. Second and two. The give is to David Wilson. And Wilson got the first down, a gain of three. Virginia Tech came into the game ranked number four. They lost the first game of the season against Alabama, then have won five straight games. And look at the start of the season for them over the last three years. Losses to LSU, East Carolina, and this year, Alabama. But a win here tonight keeps them in the national championship picture. Taylor trying to keep them there, too. T-Mobile. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. <laughs>
As he was running for a touchdown, Mark, the thought dawned on me, can you see him in Georgia Tech's offense <laughs> running that triple option? I mean, this guy, as much as you talk about becoming more polished as a pocket passer, he is electrifying carrying that football. Virginia Tech will go for two right here to make it a three-point game, to try to make it a three-point game. This guy is unbelievable, Tyrod Taylor, in the open field. This is his first rushing touchdown of the season. Shows you how much he's concentrated on staying in the pocket. But you know what? Maybe it's not such a bad thing, like you said, that no he moves around a little bit. Still plenty of time to go. Two-point conversion on the way. Up in the air and incomplete. So the difference stays at five which means Virginia Tech would need a touchdown and nothing less. But he's pulled him out of the bag before. Can Taylor do it again? He's got 4.52 to do it when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. And a few moments ago, Tyrod Taylor, Bob Davies, shaken up on this two-point conversion attempt. Yeah, Georgia Tech coming with a blitz. He's going to take a straight-on hit right here. A lot of weight down on that right hand or right arm, it looked to me. See him right there on the bench. Interesting, you see Ryan Williams, the freshman tailback, who's been fighting some flu symptoms coming over. He'll be back, Mark. He'll be back. It all comes down right now to stopping Josh Nesbitt in his Georgia Tech offense. Give Tyrod Taylor one more chance. Josh Nesbitt with a fumble the last time he was on the field for Georgia Tech. Kickoff down at the five yard line. That's Embry Peebles. And Peebles returns it out to the 25 where it'll be first down and 10. Well, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, two AFC West Division rivals battle it out. Brandon Marshall and the Broncos taking on Phillip Rivers and the Chargers. That's all at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown. Served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Josh McDaniel, now the boy wonder, yeah. right? Comes yeah. from the New England Patriots. Yeah. It wasn't long ago, Eric Mangini with the Jets. What do they call him, Mangenius? Yes. <laughs> Similar, a young guy coming from Bill Belichick. Staff gets off to a fast start. And McDaniel ruffled a few feathers when he first came in, but they're loving him now. I tell you, he was excited after beating the Patriots last yeah. week. Showed it, too. Has been on the play fake. Going up top and incomplete. Cam Chancellor right there with Embry Peoples. Mark Cam Chancellor is playing an outstanding football game. They know that he's coming up tough and run support, so they run the little play action wheel route. Very interesting call right there by Paul Johnson because now Bud Foster has the advantage here on second and ten, Mark. This is a huge play in this football game right now. You hold them under five yards right here, set up third and five. Virginia Tech will get the football back. And they threw thinking about it big time. Nesbitt on the toss. Allen on the catch. And Anthony Allen with the first down out at midfield at the 48-yard line. Allen went low to catch the ball on the pitch, and he picked up 23. Two courageous calls by Paul Johnson. The pass on first down. They come back and pitch the football. Mark, look at their two previous pitches. Both of them not even close. They come back and put pitch the football right there on second down. That was a major play on second and ten. Again, they're going to get Chancellor the free safety blocked. That was a big, big play. Nesbitt hands it off to Dwyer, who stopped up right near the line of scrimmage by Demetrius Taylor. Might have gotten one on the play. You've got an option quarterback, Bob. You've got to have him practicing that pitch a lot. I mean, yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah. simple, right? I mean, Mark, you hit the nail on the head, and not everybody can do it. You know, you come down that line of scrimmage, you pitch it with your left hand going left, your right hand going right. Obviously, if you've pitched it, somebody has taken you and taken you out. It's a very difficult thing. And I give credit to Paul Johnson for coming back and pitching that football. I guess I give him credit. If it would have fumbled right there, I'd have been first guessing that call. Second and nine. Nesbitt keeps it on the quarterback lead. A nice gain down to the 
42 yard line right at that first down marker. He picked up nine, and it looks like enough for the first down for the Yellow Jackets with 3.19 to go. Well, Cam Chancellor will be glad when this football game's over, Mark. I mean, they have put a blocker on him every time, and what happens? But to keep it simple, Virginia Tech is caught between the defensive end, closing for the fullbacker, taking the quarterback, and they're one short. I believe they call it assignment football. The wing came from Buffalo, man. I'll tell you, Bob Davy, Georgia Tech trying to hook a big fish here tonight in Virginia Tech with 319 to go in the game. Georgia Tech would move into a tie of sorts with Virginia Tech. Both teams with one loss in the coastal division of the ACC with a win tonight. First and ten. Jonathan Dwyer on the carry. Well, Dwyer takes a pounding, doesn't he? Going into all that humanity. <laughs> Virginia Tech using their timeouts, but Georgia Tech with 233 yards now, Mark, in the second half. First half, they had 88 yards and 51 on the one pass to Demario Thomas. But they come back in the second half now, and they have just controlled this football game. They have made the X and O adjustments on blocking the perimeter. And it's been a, it's been a clinic here in the second half of just triple option football. And what about the Georgia Tech defense? Boy, that's the story of the night as far as I'm concerned. You look at the way that they gave up 539 yards last week down in Tallahassee against Florida State. And this week giving up just 16 points to a Virginia Tech team that Bob came into this game off a 48 point night against Boston College. Yeah, this, Second and nine coming up. This was a tough week around here for Georgia Tech defensive players and coaches and they have responded. Nesbitt hands it off once again to Jonathan Dwyer. Georgia Tech has run 66 plays tonight. 59 of them have been running plays. Paul Johnson's done it before. He's been successful at places before Georgia Tech and it's been successful tonight. 3.08 to go. A pivotal, critical third and seven coming up. Ball just inside the 40. Only fourth down territory for Georgia Tech. Nesbitt keeps it, and he's got the first down. He's thinking about six. Nesbitt, no way to stop him. Touchdown. They're going to review this. But it's been a clinic on triple option football. They're going to see if he stepped out of bounds. Josh Nesbitt had a similar play last week at Florida State, Bob, when he seemingly broke the back of the Seminoles late in the game with a run just like this. He's still in bounds at this point. The referee is right there. Or right there. The only thing. Looks like he almost left a divot on the chalk. <laughs> Boy, he is a strong, strong player. The only thing you can see, the side it. judge right there, Mark, was not looking down at his feet. Watch the side judge here late. He, right there, see, he looks, you know, that left foot was very close right there. Yeah. Well, Josh Nesbitt's going to have some happy roommates tonight. He rooms with 
Morgan Burnett and Derek Morgan. And he talked about atoning for last year. Running on the field stands. Nesbitt with his third touchdown of the night. He's run 23 times for 122 yards. Mark, Josh Nesbitt the last four weeks averaging 27 carries, about 100 yards a game from the quarterback position in this that, triple option. That's all about durability, right? I mean, <laughs> you have to have a guy that's not going to break down. Mark, let's take a look at what's happening. This has been a clinic on option football. The first thing you're going to see, the defensive end right here is going to close and take the fullback. So now the quarterback comes out on the option. You get an excellent crackback block right here by Tyler Melton on the free safety. Grimm is going to take the pitch. There's nobody on that quarterback. So if you're going to play your run support that way, you have to put the defensive end on the quarterback, not the fullback. Because if the quarterback gets out, you've got both perimeter players used up. It has been a clinic by Paul Johnson against a great defensive football team, Virginia Tech. Is that designation by the lineman to take the fullback <laughs> or quarterback it, made before the snap? Exactly, or? Mark. It comes down to calls. You know, you tell your defensive end either take the fullback or take the quarterback in conjunction with how you're playing it on the perimeter. So they are not totally in sync on defense, but the Georgia Tech is totally in sync on offense. That's 311 rushing yards. The fifth time this season, Georgia Tech has gone over 300, including 400 last week in Tallahassee. Well, this time, Bob, they don't kick it to Roberts. It's fielded at the 32 instead. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. A reminder of what's going on around our family of networks. On ESPN, Alabama leading South Carolina by 10. And on ABC, it's the NASCAR Banking 500 coming to you straight from Charlotte. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. And back here at the 39, it's first and 10. And a daunting task ahead for Tyrod Taylor at this point. Yeah, Mark, we started off. Who's the best one-loss team in the country? Virginia Tech had a legitimate right to say that. All of a sudden, that's coming to an end right now. Taylor downfield, and it's complete at the 33-yard line. Danny Cole seemingly always on the end of those desperation passes by Taylor. And if the number four team loses before this night is over, what happens next with respect to the top ten? Yeah, there's a bunch of teams in that mix. But you know what? With this guy at quarterback, I'm not ready to go totally down that conversation just yet of ruling Virginia Tech out. BCS standings coming out after the games this weekend. Tyrod Taylor underneath complete. That's Boone. Big Greg Boone makes the catch. Boy, that's a big athletic tight end, Greg Boone, a guy that was a quarterback in high school. And look where the football is down here at the 20-yard line with two minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Well, Taylor's only thrown 12 times, but he's completed eight. <laughs> Just dancing around back there. Pump faked one defender and runs out of bounds at the 16-yard line with 2.12 to go. Mark, that clock will start again because there's more than two minutes left on that clock. So Virginia Tech needs to get up there and get going because the referee's starting the clock right now. That's Derek Morgan, the leader up front for Georgia Tech, apparently holding his back and shaking up. Georgia Tech calls one of its three timeouts, second and eight coming up. Well, Josh Nesbitt has been the central figure in Georgia Tech's wins both, well, three weeks in a row now, but especially last week. 
game winning drive against Florida State. This is what it looked like. Yeah, Mark, he took the, this is the game winning touchdown run, I think, if I remember back. Very similar to what he did tonight. And he and Joe Webb from UAB, from Alabama, Birmingham. Joe Webb is the number one quarterback as far as rushing. I think Josh Nesbitt may overtake him tonight statistically. I'll tell you what, Joe Webb's sitting at home right now. Glad that you mentioned his name. You know what? I think Joe <laughs> Webb might be playing tonight. I saw they were getting beat by somebody here a minute ago. <laughs> we found a way to weave Joe Webb into that conversation, didn't we? 206 to go, second and eight. Virginia Tech with no timeouts remaining. Taylor complete to Boykin. Out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal from about the eight. Mark again because there's two minutes and one second instead of a minute 59. That clock's going to roll again when they set this ball ready for play. But again, a very excellent touch on that throw by Tyrod Taylor. First and goal. Out of the backfield, Williams wide open. He's going to jog in for the score. And the question begs now, Bob, do they go for two here or one? It's sitting on a six-point lead. One point you know, makes Mark, it a five Two point points advantage. doesn't make much difference, though. It's still going to be a touchdown. They need two touchdowns to win the football game. So whether it's a five-point game or a four-point game is really of no relevance. The relevant thing now is onside kick for Virginia Tech. Well, special teams has been one of the strong points during the Beamer tenure, all 23 years at Virginia Tech. But Mark, last week, Florida State onside kicked at the end of the game. Georgia Tech's backup quarterback, Jabo Shaw, recovered that, correct? Right. Well, we're in the same scenario again tonight. Virginia Tech definitely onside kick. 148 to go. Boy, Tyrod Taylor led that team down the field with clinical efficiency. They scored in a hurry. And it all started with the little pooch kind of kick, but a minute and 12 seconds to take that football the length of the field. And if you're Virginia Tech right now, you have to feel confident if you get this football back, you can take it and score again. There's Frank Beamer, the special teams guru, laying it down for his team with 148 to go. Well, what a great day in college <laughs> football, huh? Couple Texas, Oklahoma, a yeah. big time game. You have Ohio State going down. The Florida Arkansas game, last second field goal right for the Gators yeah, to win. Barely Notre Dame, USC. It's going to be interesting to see what those BCS standings look like and who ends up ultimately in the BCS National Championship by Citibank in Pasadena. And number 11, Jabo Shaw, again out there in a key position, lined up. I'm going to circle him right there. That's the guy last week that recovered it down in Tallahassee. It looks like Virginia Tech's going the opposite way. They have two kickers in the game, Mark. Here it comes. They got the high bounce, and it's fielded cleanly by the DB, Gerard Tarrant. Not sure how much better they could have executed. They got it high up in the air. Didn't have enough time to get hokey players downfield. And Mark, the number four team in the country. There's going to be an interesting BCS poll tomorrow, the first day, right? The first yep. BCS poll. What happens? Does Boise State move up after an unimpressive win at Tulsa? Does Cincinnati move up? Well, the Bearcats doing well, and you wonder what's ahead for them with Tony Pike, their starting quarterback, hurt in that game. Georgia Tech, meanwhile, will improve to six and one overall. And here's a look at their schedule to come at Virginia, at Vanderbilt, then home against Wake, at Duke, and then home in the season closer against Georgia. And they need help. Miami beat them head to head, correct? Yep. So somebody's going to have to beat Miami. 
for Georgia Tech to go represent this coastal division. But what a great win after a very on triple option like first half by Georgia Tech Mark they came out and put on a clinic and we have to talk again Dave Womack yep. and that defensive football team to bounce back from last two weeks last week they gave up 539 yards to Florida State this whole stadium's rocking right now literally Is there anything better than college football, Mark? Huh? <laughs> college football in Atlanta. <laughs> they are going to turn it loose and get down into A-Town tonight. Georgia Tech will improve to 6-1. and one. And four and one in the ACC's Coastal Division. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, will fall to five and two overall and three and one in conference play. Final score 28 to 23 for the Yellow Jackets. Their first one at home against a top five team in a couple of decades. College football scoreboard is coming up next. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. What a day in college football. For